Welcome to Congoingas. What you see is a little town called Congoingas, which is on the route when you are in uh, Minas Gerais and from Belo Horizonte you want to visit all of the cities that have a lot of uh, colonial architecture and especially the Baroque churches. You pass by this city. The population of Congoingas is a little bit over 55 thousand people and an interesting fact is the name Congonias comes from a plant that grows in this region called Congonia and it is used for a wide range of um, applications and, and uses one of them being even for a medicinal use. We really wanted to come and visit Congonias because it has a tourist attraction that I would say is the main tourist attraction of the city because it has a lot of significance when it comes to art and the history that comes with this place. The place is called Sanctuary of Bon Jesus de Matosinhos. This is basically a complex that has a church on top of the hill and also Along the hill, as you go up, there are six chapels. This complex is a UNESCO heritage site. These six chapels, each one tells a little bit of the story of the path of crucifixion of Christ. And inside each chapel, you have, again, artwork, statues, and everything else that we will definitely show you. The most important thing about the church and the whole complex that we really wanted to talk about is the person, the artist that made this happen. He was very, very famous and in Brazil he is very, very well known. His name was Antonio Francisco Lisboa. His nickname was Alejadinho. Antonio Francisco Lisboa was born as the son of the, at the time, illegitimate relationship between, uh, I would say, let's say a high-born Portuguese person, and he was also an architect, a rich, high-born Portuguese person, and one of his slaves, that was a lady, and uh, they had a relationship, and that's how Antonio Francisco Lisboa was born. There are different counts about uh, the exact date that he was born. Some people say it was year 1730, some others say it could have been a little bit closer to 1738. He was baptized and also never worked as a slave. The complex has one of the most important works of Aleja Gino, which is the 12 statues that are also located around the church that is on top of the hill where the sanctuary is located. Throughout uh, his life, unfortunately, his health deteriorated and little by little he lost movements of his hands and his fingers. Until today, uh, nobody is sure what was the sickness that he had. Some people say maybe it was like a, a disease that had to do with nervous system. Some people say maybe it was leprosy because at the end when he was actually working on his masterpieces and the statues and everything else that he was working at, he had to wrap his hands with bandage and cover them so he could actually carry the tools to make his statues. Aleijado in Portuguese means crippled and Aleijadinho was his nickname, which meant a little crippled person. That was his nickname. By the time he started the work, at this complex inside the chapels and the church itself and with the 12 statues that he called them the 12 prophets he was already very well known but unfortunately it was at the age that his health had really really deteriorated to the point that uh, they say he would even not show his face 
During the day he would stay home and only after sunset, when it was dark, he would even cover his head to come outside of his place and go through the streets to get here and work on this project and on the church. So we really wanted to come and see this place to show you the work that Aleja Gino did and his work is not just limited to Congonias and this complex. He has done a lot of amazing work in all the other cities that we will uh, visit. If I'm not mistaken, even Chiradentis, some of the structures, some of the design elements were designed by Aleja Gino. The stone that is used for the 12 statues in front of the church, in Portuguese it's called Pedra Sabon or the soap stone that he used for these designs and for these structures. So basically where I stand right now is at the beginning of the hill and from this point on you have chapels, six of them. At the end on the top you will see the church. So the first chapel is this one which I'm, unfortunately we cannot go inside and see it but basically this is what you would see inside. They have put this image here. This is all done by Aleja Gino and it's inside the chapel. This first chapel tells the story of Christ in the middle and all the other people that were with him before his path to crucifixion started. And then as we go higher and get closer to the church, there are other chapels and each one has another story along the way of the path of crucifixion. I'm going to try to see if I can show you inside this one. I'm not sure if inside this one the GoPro can capture it, but there is just an angel and just a big, big piece of stone. I believe this site at night also is going to be very, very beautiful if they have they put lights and uh, really capture the beauty of these structures. A lot of them are under, um, not construction, but I think they are just doing some static work to them so they can keep the look and maintain it in a good shape. This one also is closed. As you can see, they are working on it. Unfortunately, I cannot show you inside. Let's go see the fourth one. That, again, they are working on it but they have a print of the artwork that is inside of this chapel. Let's see if I can go through the structures that they have put and show you. Oh, yes. So this is inside of the fourth chapel. The fifth chapel has these statues inside. And finally, the sixth chapel. They say that in some of these statues also, he had the hands or the legs of the characters a bit crippled or turned like the hands of this statue here that is a little bit deformed this was on purpose because he wanted to emphasize his sickness Aleja Gino when he was creating this and he wanted to show uh, some of the characters even the statues that were crippled or they had the leg or the hand a bit deformed to emphasize his own sickness. Also, on this side, you have all of these little shops that you can buy handcrafts, souvenirs, everything. As it goes down, it continues. All of those buildings on this side, they are shops. And now, let's go and check out the church and all of the characters. 12 statues that he called 12 prophets and each one also has a message on the side that is written in Latin that uh, he wanted to emphasize. So each statue, as I mentioned, has 
this uh, on the side which is like a message it's written in Latin and each one also he named them this one is called Amos and there is a version of the story that they say this one called Amos actually he tried to show his own face on this um, statue I don't know if it is true or not also because the right hand the fingers are missing I don't know if it was at the time on purpose or this is just after that it happened because some other ones also they're missing some fingers so besides the statues also this uh, frame around the door as well is his work at the time the artists they would not sign their work but they say that whatever he has done he always leaves a little head of the angel on it and this would be kind of considered as his signature for his work so imagine somebody with that kind of health somebody that couldn't that was losing the movement of his hands and his fingers every day working to create sculptures as real as these ones with also letters written next to them each one of them one by one being designed and then the whole complex was completed of course he had people that helped him but the whole vision the whole idea the design mostly came from him and of course my research department as always she found a map look how, how happy she is <laughs> mariana loves maps and loves reading and that's why she is the head of research department <laughs> i am the operations you know so we're in good hands i'm sure we're in good hands <laughs> one thing we would love to know if you know please let us know in the comments below the statues here the ones that are missing fingers like the Amos that I showed you or even this one if you can see there are some that are missing so if you know if it was by design or it is just after a while that the it's the after a while that they have been broken or they have come to this condition let us know because we're really curious and we couldn't find out if it's by by design or no it is after a few years that they have been here now let's go inside the church and see inside. Oh my God, wow. So inside is also as beautiful as outside. All of the paintings, the stained glass on top. Oh my God, this is amazing. So the style, uh, as I mentioned, is Baroque, but this one, to be more specific, is Baroque Rococo design. And on top, you even see two heads of dragons that uh, are hanging on both sides, and then they are supporting the chandeliers, actually, on each side. Anna is asking for forgiveness for her sins. <laughs> exactly, who's the judge to know? But, but, hey, I can still tease her, no? <laughs> so, my God, talk about dedication. Somebody who was suffering from a very, very debilitating disease did all of that so puts a lot of pressure on us everybody the rest of us <laughs> to do something useful <laughs> also 
Alejadinho was basically considered a bastard. So according to the rules of that time, he also was not entitled to any inheritance from his father after his father passed away because he was not considered a legitimate son of the person. Um, this complex also has some sort of uh, religious pilgrimage. From what we saw online, it attracts more than 100,000 people to come here to participate in that ceremony, um, if that's what uh, you guys are into. So these stores, that I, as I mentioned, they have all the products that you can also buy. And uh, for example, the stone that you see here for the dish that you have here, this is the kind of stone that is used to build the statues. This is called Pedra Sabon. And still it's used for dishes and for cooking. And these stores on the side have a lot of other products if you want to buy any handcrafts or souvenirs. Speaking of the pilgrimage that happens uh, per year, this place here called Romaria, it was built in the 30s and it served the purpose of uh, giving shelter to poor uh, pilgrims that wanted to come here and participate in that event, but uh, they were not able to find shelter. So this was used for that, for poor people to house them. Then in the 60s it was actually destroyed and in the 90s again it was rebuilt. Right now it just works as a cultural center and from what we saw online the entrance is free. So as you walk in it's just like a huge circle. In the middle I believe it's like a square that probably was used for gathering and all around as you can see, it's just rooms that people would stay at. Next to the complex with the church, you have the Museum of Congonias, and then further down you have the structure called Romaria. We're going to see if we can enter the museum, if it's open, and see if it is interesting. The ticket uh, for the museum is 10 reais per person. You can also keep this as a souvenir. You don't need to give it to them, you, this is for you. If you're a student or a professor, you pay only 5 reais but uh, complete ticket price is 10 reais so let's go see and as you walk in you also have like a little model of the whole site this is where we started actually the church and the six chapels that is Romania and this is where we are now the museum so inside the museum you have this wall that has the name of all the 12 uh, prophets that you have in front of the church and with a little bit of explanation that uh, explains what each character was all about. Here you basically have some of the tools that were used at the time for the construction and also the colors or the dyes I would say that they would use to paint 
as you saw inside the church, all of those paintings, this is how they would use the colors to paint. On the other floor of the museum also, uh, you come one floor down and then they have the replicas of the statues. Another thing that is worth mentioning is also the statues are the exact uh, size of a human. Like uh, everything is like a, mm, the exact size of a normal human, the whole size. What they would do also during the construction, what we learned is that they would first make the whole statue on wood. Then they would get the whole piece of stone. Then based on what they had on the wood, they would know where to carve and where to start to then have a final product like this one. We just finished at the museum. Uh, it's very interesting. It's if you want to have a little bit more information. But one thing we also really wanted to mention is that when we came to Brazil and we wanted to go and visit and do touristic stuff. I was under the impression that uh, touristic stuff in Brazil is only beaches and party and uh, uh, barbecue. But then when you come to these cities that uh, have a lot of history, especially from the colonial era, you might think that we are only showing churches, but no, this is the tourist attraction in, this, in these cities because from that era, especially these little towns, um, we, we are at the place that it, everything happened here during the 17th and 18th century, which was the time that they had the gold rush. And then these places were little villages or communities, but because of the gold rush, they became cities. And all of this attracted people, attracted uh, miners, and then churches and history. A lot of things happened because of that. And especially in Minas, when you come to these little towns, this is the tourist activity that you have to do. Uh, I don't want to just show churches, but this is what it is. Especially like a small city like Congonias, this is what you have. That being said, um, the museum is good, it's interesting, gives you a lot of uh, information. One thing that uh, I learned in the museum that about the statues, because I asked like if, uh, like because they have been there for more than 200 years and uh, with the weather they are gonna go like become like very damaged and if they have like thought about replacing them, building like models, re remove the ones that are there and then put the models but they said that the removal of the statues will damage more the statues than leaving them there so what they did like in, in 2009-2010 they even like thought about that removing it but they said no they, they even they even trying to make models the material that they were using to make the models they had to like touch the statues with this material damaged them already so and then the removal of the statue they saw that it would be so hard so it's better like it's yeah. better not to get killed by some people that uh, they really <laughs> want to just come over us apparently <laughs> okay continue okay again <laughs> so they decided that it's better to leave them where they are and uh, knowing that the weather will damage them anyway then trying to remove them unfortunately also as i mentioned about the gold rush uh, era in here in brazil after a while there was no more gold so the economy went down and cities like congonias before we came here i also thought that okay the city really depends on tourism then but no 
you gotta love filming in Brazil. All kinds of noises and sounds <laughs> they happen around you. But but Congonhas uh, doesn't really rely only on tourism. Actually, one of the main uh, drivers of the economy in Congonhas is the minerals mining of uh, metals and specifically the steel industry is very strong. So even though they have this, uh, it's really not the main driver of the economy. So this wraps up our visit in Congonhas. We really hope that you enjoyed it. It's a very little cute town, so there's basically just this complex to visit. We hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.